My name is Gene Dianetti. I'm uh, originally from upstate New York, Rochester, New York area. Um, was uh, born there. Uh, first few years of my life, uh, we lived in a, a small community called East Rochester, New York. And when I was seven years old, my parents uh, bought a home and we moved to uh, Fairport, New York, and which is uh, just one town over from East Rochester. And I went through all the school system there in uh, Fairport, graduated from uh, Fairport High School. Went to college, the first two years of college, I went to uh, Alfred State College. It was one of the State University in, of New York campuses. It was a uh, two-year ag and tech uh, university. And that's really what got me started in the, the air conditioning field, was uh, when I was 16 years old, my, my father was a partner in a heating and air conditioning uh, contractor company. And uh, when I was 16 years old, I had a, a summer job working uh, at an apartment complex as sort of a mechanics helper. And what I did that whole summer was lay on my back in a crawl space on one of these wheel carts that you could wheel around on your back inside a crawl space. And as the installers installed the sheet metal for the ductwork in the crawl spaces, I went around on my back with a drill and drilled sheet metal screws in the ductwork. So that, that was my summer job, to hold everything together. So, yeah. so that's how I started in the air conditioning heating business was shooting sheet metal screws in, in ductwork when I was 16 years old. We didn't tape any seams. Uh, it was the sort of, uh, you know, the sheet metal and they would uh, dovetail it and they slide it together and then you had to put sheet metal screws to hold it together. So that got me really interested and fascinated with uh, air conditioning uh, systems and, and furnaces. So then uh, my next summer, I was able to uh, work a little bit, uh, well, became more involved with the installations, actually helping set the furnaces, uh, run the uh, flue pipes up through the building and to the, up to the roof. And we also um, ran the refrigerant lines from the, the uh, A coils in the furnace out to the condensing units, which were either outside or in some cases they were, they were up on the roof. So I got a, a pretty good exposure to what heating and air conditioning systems were all about. So when I was trying to decide what I wanted to go to school for, I mean, I, I always wanted to, to be an engineer, even at a, a very young age, and thought, well, this would be an interesting field to learn about. I certainly didn't want to spend the rest of my life uh, laying on my back shooting sheet metal screws into ductwork, but I thought it would be interesting to go to college for and learn more about uh, air conditioning and refrigeration systems. So uh, Alfred State College, had a uh, two-year uh, associate degree program in air conditioning technology. So that was my first two years of college was going to Alfred State uh, and got my associate's degree in air conditioning technology. Not as a technician, no, it was an applied associate in science degree. Um, I, I'm not sure they, they have programs like that anymore, but, but at the time um, it was, it was uh, one step up, say, from going and, and getting, a, say, an, a, a, a trade or an apprentice license to, to, to become, a, say, a, a contractor or a, an air conditioning technician. And I, I just chose the, the, the engineering route versus uh, going into, into the trade. But what it, it taught me at a very young age was that uh, you know, if you graduate from, from high school and, and you're not going to go to college, then you, you have the, the, the uh, opportunity to, to learn a trade, and, and that was one of the trades that I felt was, was, worth, was worth pursuing if, if I, the engineering part of it you know, didn't work out for me. No, it actually was a, a two-year associate in applied science degree that you could either you know, use that degree um, or you could go on and, and finish your bachelor of science degree in mechanical engineering. 
because uh, I was, you know, taking credits towards a actual bachelor of science degree. Not at SUNY because at the time Alfred State was only, it's a four-year university now, but back when I enrolled in, in the campus it was a two-year ag and tech. So I had to either finish up at, say, Rochester Institute of Technology up in, the, you know, the Rochester area or find another you know, college to transfer to. I transferred uh, to the Milwaukee School of Engineering in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So I, I thought it was time to uh, move out of New York state, state and see, you know, what the rest of the country had to offer. And, you know, which was, you know, interesting for my parents because I was the, the oldest in my family and my mom and dad didn't have uh, college degrees. And, you know, they always sort of felt that they wanted, you know, their their kids to go to college. I have a younger brother and a younger sister, so I was the oldest, so I was sort of first for everything. And then, you know, I decided to go to college, and then I went to college out of state. And they thought, well, what, what's happening here? My my kids are going away, and you know, they're not staying close to home. And I had to try to explain to them, well, you know, that was sort of the point that if I went and got an education, that that was going to open up more opportunities for me. To, you know, to be able to go wherever, say, the opportunities were versus just, you know, staying in the local area. When I graduated with my uh, Bachelor of Science degree and I got my first job at the Singer Company, the Singer Company, the sewing machine company, they had a controls division in Milwaukee and controls division of the Singer Company made air conditioning components thermostatic expansion valves, pressure regulators, solenoid valves. So they were a controls company. They made uh, refrigeration products and they also made uh, timers and um, valves and switches for appliances. So it was an acquisition that they had made um, uh, from a company that was originally formed in Milwaukee called the uh, Controls Company or Controls Company of America. When I graduated from Milwaukee School of Engineering in 1977, that, that was my, my first job, was at the Singer Company Controls Division. Now that, that company originally started in Milwaukee as automatic products, okay? And then, then it became the Controls Company of America, and then it was acquired by the Singer Company, and they just made that their Controls Division. And, and at the time, um, we had a, two locations in Milwaukee and a, a very, very large uh, screw machine facility in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, on the other side of town that machined valve bodies, did a lot of brazing, uh, bright dipping. So we, we were making um, probably you know, 20, 25,000 expansion valves a day uh, for automotive. I mean, very, very high volume uh, manufacturing facility. So that was my sort of uh, entry into the business was learning about a thermostatic expansion valves. I was mainly working with uh, expansion valves and uh, four-way reversing valves. We were making uh, reversing valves at the Singer Company so I was doing some projects with that which was mainly for uh, you know residential applications uh, reversing valves for heat pumps. So I was involved in, in both uh, sides of the business, uh, the residential, commercial, and also uh, the automotive. But what was interesting about that job is they, they hired me out of school to be an application engineer, not a regular mechanical engineer working in the mechanical engineering department. They had a gentleman that was retiring after close to 40 years with the company, and they hired me in May when I graduated, and. The, the person that was, I was replacing um, wasn't going to retire until later in that year, so I couldn't really shadow this guy for, for six months. It, it just you know, wouldn't have made sense to do that. So what they did was they put me in the lab to work in the lab for six months to really learn the product and learn the business before I started moving over to, to work as, as an application engineer. So then I worked with him for the last couple of weeks to sort of you know learn you know that job and the customers that he was working with and and basically that role was to to provide a, a liaison support between 
the engineering department and our field sales group. So when the field sales group would have opportunities at customers, then they would contact the application department and then I would work with the engineering department to make sure that we were applying the right product for the, the application that we were, we were uh, pursuing with the customer. That was 1977. And then in uh, 1979, uh, they, uh, the Singer Company decided to close the Milwaukee office and move some of us from Milwaukee to Schiller Park, Illinois, because that, we had another location in Schiller Park, mainly uh, appliance products down there, so they were combining the, the air conditioning refrigeration portion into the appliance uh, business down in Schiller Park. So I was transferred to uh, Schiller Park, Illinois, and worked there for about another year and a half, and I uh, decided it was time for me to, to move back to upstate New York. Uh, Parker Hannafin um, was a competitor at the time, and I decided to take an opportunity at, at Parker Hannafin and move back to upstate New York to uh, Lyons, New York, which is sort of halfway between Rochester and Syracuse. And that was the uh, refrigeration and air conditioning division of Parker Hannafin. And that's where I started with Parker in uh, November of 1980 up till this point <laughs> that we're, we're talking here today. So that's uh, close to 39 years with, with Parker Hannafin. So that's, uh, basically been my career, two companies, uh, the first three years with the Singer Company and you know the last close to 39 years with Parker Hannafin. Shortly after I left the Singer Company, they had divested that business to Eaton. And then not too long ago, Eaton divested that expansion valve business uh, to Parker Hannafin and I got involved with a lot of the products uh, it, later on that I had worked on at the at the Singer company that we got back at Parker and then uh, <laughs> not too long ago we divested that business uh, and that's uh, been taken over by uh, SMP Standard Motor Products. We had the business and it was uh, Annex manufacturing at the time that we had divested sold the business to Annex and then that all became part of uh, you know, Four Seasons and SMP. You know, and that's why when, uh, you know, we did that class back, you know, with, with Annex, and then um, when uh, Elvis approached me last year to do an, another class, he said, hey, can I've, I've asked, uh, went and, and talked to, um, to, you know, Gary Hansen, and, you know, asking for ideas, or oh, what, you know, what can Gene teach? And, and then, you know, Gary thought, well, it'll be, Good idea for for me to teach that class again because it had been a while, you know, since since we taught that class. But my first 17 years with Parker, they I mean Parker Hannafin hired me to be an expansion valve engineer from the Singer Company, wow. and their expansion valve product line was in Lyons, New York. So I started with them in November of 1980. And then January of 1981, it was less than two months later, I get called into the HR office on a Friday afternoon, and usually that's not a, a good discussion. <laughs> so I thought, well, I wonder what this is all about. So I go to this meeting and they ask me, well, how would you like to move to Orlando, Florida? And I thought, why? Well, I just moved back to upstate New York and Orlando, Florida. I mean, that was the, like the furthest thought from my mind, it'd be like somebody asking me, how would you like to live in Alaska? I mean, it's just something you're, you're not expecting. So, so they offered to move me down there because they were moving the product line out of Lyons, New York. There was a facility down there that became available through another acquisition that Parker had made and they wanted to fill that, that operation and, and grow the expansion valve business, put it in a facility to, so it could grow. It was just a, a product line in a very big plant in, uh, in Lyons. So we decided to do that. And so we started that business in 1981. And you know, we grew that business from a very small uh, operation to uh, a, a whole new facility that we built in 
Longwood, Florida, just north of Orlando, and we moved it out of the small building that we were in in Winter Park, Florida, which was in the Orlando area up to Longwood, and we uh, got pretty serious about making expansion valves. So I was at that facility until 1997. So from 1981 to 1977, I worked uh, as Parker, Parker's uh, expansion valve engineer and uh, was the engineering manager of the expansion valve facility. Right, right. well what, what really happened was expansion valves came around say in the, in the 60s and 70s, early 70s, and you know, the, the original expansion valves, there were a lot of, lot of issues with those systems, they were very complex. I mean, the expansion valves were expensive. The reliability may not have been, you know, what it, what it should have been back then when it all started. So there were a lot of issues with expansion valves. So the, or, the orifice tube, cycling clutch orifice tube system with the accumulator was developed to uh, sort of cost reduce the system and make it less complex. But the, the problem with those systems, they were great running down the, the highway, you know, when you were moving at, at vehicle speed conditions, but when you were driving an orifice tube system, say in uh, populated areas in city driving, a lot of idling, um, start and stop, you know, city traffic, uh, high ambient conditions like Arizona, the, uh, the pressures would, would go up, the, the saturated evaporator temperature would go up, the temperatures would go up, so the system didn't perform very well in uh, city driving and uh, high ambient or idling conditions. So performance became a problem with the orifice tube systems. Um, then cars started to get smaller. Uh, the condenser got smaller. The, the <laughs> everything started to get smaller and the performance was uh, was compromised uh, you know, as the cars got smaller. So then there was the drive to go back to expansion valves because the advantage with the expansion valve system was they performed better during city driving and, and vehicle idling conditions. Yeah, you were controlling superheat to the evaporator. The problem with the orifice tube systems is they would flood. So as, as the evaporators would flood, and that was the purpose of the accumulator was to protect the compressor. So if you flooded the evaporator, you're your, your saturation temperature would go up and you would lose, you know, air conditioning performance, your discharge air temperature would increase. It was, yeah, it was to protect the compressor and then to provide the desiccant for the system, space for the desiccant. Yeah, yeah, the, the old, uh, it was designed, uh, it was developed by the Controls Company of America, Singer Company. The, they had the original patent on the, the bulbless expansion valve because back the original valves were the little brass right angle valves. They had capillary tubes and bulbs and you know, they were apt to break and you know, fatigue and there was problems with mounting uh, thermal bulbs. So the, uh, the whole idea of the, the block or the H valve was to eliminate the, the capillary tube and the bulb to make the, the valve uh, more robust. Well, H valves made, made a comeback when the, the drive was to go back to the expansion valve systems because they were, they were easier to, to plumb, you know, with the, the, the plumbing, you know, so they either was, uh, you know, they, they had uh, the fittings, the seals had, had gotten better. So it was just a, a, a lot easier to, to put into, into the vehicle, you didn't have to uh, have threaded fittings, you could, you could uh, make them up with a, a plate and a bolt, you know, so, uh, seal washers, you didn't have to mount a, a, a bulb to a line and try to insulate it or clamp it or put it in the right position, so it just was a, a much more robust application. Well, I mean, there's still application for them. I mean, uh, from, from my experience back when we, we had the product line, they were very popular, say, on uh, dual systems where you had an aux evaporator. So you would package the little uh, brass L valve or right angle valve into the aux evaporator. And then you would have a block or an H valve in the front system. Yeah, or a, an SUV where you'd have a aux system in the rear. Or say on a class eight truck, you've got the sleeper uh, system in the back.
I mean, we have always made uh, assemblies for uh, heavy duty truck applications, the steel lines, uh, hoses. So, you know, we've always made uh, AC hose and we made AC hose assemblies. So there was that business. Uh, so our, our division was involved in, in the assemblies. Um, the division that I'm with now, Hose Products Division, and that we make the, the hose, the air conditioning hose. Um, hose Products makes hose for a lot of different applications, including hydraulic and general purpose hoses and industrial hose. So Hose Products is a very large division in Parker Hannifin. Um, we make hoses for just about you know, every application that you can, you know, can apply hose to. So just that my corner of the business was the, the air conditioning product. So there were the, the hose assemblies, uh, accumulators, dryers. We've always been in that business. Just chose to divest the expansion valve portion of the business. Yeah, well, I mean, valves are different than plumbing. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. you, there's plumbing has its challenges. Expansion valves had their challenges. But, you know, you would think that, well, what could be so complicated about hoses and fittings and plumbing? Well, it, it can be very complicated. It's a very important part of the system as each, each product has its own unique set of challenges. I uh, always been, you know, a, an engineer work, working for either the Singer Company or Parker. And then I, I said, well, you know, how do I get involved in, in the industry? You know, I was, uh, you know, very curious about, you know, the products and, you know, and air conditioning and the systems, but I thought, well, um, you know, what, what is the, you know, what does the industry have out there in organizations? I mean, I had heard about, you know, SAE and, you know, the uh, mechanical engineering societies and, and this and thought, well, what, what is really out there for, uh, for our industry? So, I started going to uh, SAE meetings, and I would 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 go to say the we would have the alternate uh, refrigerant symposiums in in Phoenix every year. So I started going to that, and here I'm sitting in a, a very big room with a lot of people, and and I don't really see anyone from my company participating. I mean, it's it's one thing to go to a meeting and just see what's going on but you know are we are we up there contributing you know information and and teaching and and explaining um, you know what what our products were all about and you know what what we had to offer the industry so I started to ask questions and 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 then I was was offered the opportunity to to do a couple presentations at, at these symposiums so I, I chose I really chose to get involved because I didn't, I mean, I didn't think it was, it was really all that worthwhile for me to just attend meetings, that it just made more sense to me to, to get involved and, you know, actively participate. Not with the, with the automotive part. Uh, I originally got involved in ASHRAE. Um, I've been an ASHRAE member for, since the 1970s when I, graduated school and I was very actively involved with ASHRAE in the beginning of my career. In fact, they're one of the technical committees, uh, TC 8.8, .8, was the Controls and Accessories Committee. I, I chaired that committee for several years. So that was really the, my first active involvement in, in the industry was through ASHRAE as a, uh, on the technical committees there, but never really was actively involved um, on the automotive side, so then from ASHRAE, uh, the, my responsibility at Parker was taking more of an automotive direction, so then I, I got involved in, in uh, SAE. And uh, my, uh, I was actively involved in the, in the Phoenix uh, Alternate Refrigerant Symposium, and then when, we, when uh, SAE started the IMAC, um, initiative to improve the mobile air conditioning systems uh, when we started this whole thing with the you know the J2727 and how to rate systems and so I was actively involved in, in IMAC and I co-chaired the, the uh, leakage reduction uh, committee 
with an iMac. Uh, Show Two Patel and I, Show Two Patel was uh, working for Hutchinson at the time. He's been retired for many years now. So uh, Show Two Patel and I uh, co-chaired the leakage reduction uh, uh, iMac initiative. So I, I never really was in, involved with, with Macs, but became familiar with Macs through my association with SAE. So since I wanted to actively participate in meetings and, and chair committees and work on standards, and then I started to go to, to Max meetings and you know got to know uh, Marion and Elvis, and then I was, was asked to, to do presentations at Max. Yeah, but it's interesting because, I mean, Al Leopold, I, I worked with him, um, you know, for, for many years. Alan was, uh, was involved with him with expansion valves, and I've worked with Gary Hansen in the past. So, I mean, a lot of the people that I've worked with, you know, customers of ours in the industry, that, you know, they were involved in SAE and Max. So then you know, I thought it was a, you know, good idea for, for me to do the same thing. And that's really probably one of the most rewarding experiences of my career. I mean, I, I did a lot of work at, at Parker. We worked on a lot of interesting uh, projects. I've got uh, a couple of patents on products that I developed at Parker, so it was always fun to invent things and, and help grow the business and uh, work on, on interesting projects, but it was you know, very rewarding as well to to take that knowledge and then work with the industry to help um, work on uh, new standards for, for SAE and for ASHRAE at the time, but then also to help you know, teach some of this material to, to the, uh, like the, the MAX members, which you know, were, were sort of you know, makes me feel good because that's kind of how I feel that I started, started out as a, a an installer and, and as I was going to college I continued to work for an air conditioning contractor in Rochester, New York when I went home for the summers and, and I worked as a, a service technician but the, for residential air conditioning. So I had a service truck and, and I would take service calls to, to work on and fix residential air conditioners. So I've always either <laughs> either been in this industry as an installer, a technician in my earlier years, and then you know, became an engineer and, and took that route to, to do more of the engineering work, not the, the service and technician, but I felt that I, I grew up in that industry, so it's always sort of made me feel good to be able to go to Max and, and you know, teach what I've learned uh, throughout the years as an engineer to the technicians because I feel that's that's where I started, and I understand, um, you know, what that what that's all about, and and how it how helpful it is to the technicians to to help them understand um, how the systems work and how to troubleshoot them, and you know the things to look for. Well, I have the first patent I got was on an expansion valve. It was on a on a on an H valve, a, a thermal element uh, for an H valve. And then I've got a, another patent uh, on a, a hose coupling uh, at Parker, and then another patent on a, a hose that we developed. So I have three, three patents, a couple, a couple other applications that are pending, but, but three patents that have been awarded. One on a hose, one on a hose fitting, and one on an expansion valve. Well, when, when, I, was, uh, when I was growing up, going to school, I was in scouting and I went all the way through scouting. I became an Eagle Scout. So, you know, always proud of that. that and, so, and then Eagle Scouting taught me a lot of things, or scouting taught me a lot of things, and, and of which, you know, a lot of it was community involvement. So uh, a few years ago, uh, the, this, the subdivision that I live in in the, the Memphis area, um, the, the board, it was a volunteer board for a, our subdivision. We have 200 homes in our subdivision, and I became actively involved in the the board of our uh, homeowners association and became the the board president. And I felt pretty proud because we we uh, 
the previous board sort of you know was a all volunteer and you know we all have jobs and families so it's is difficult to to dedicate a lot of time to the the homeowners association but you know we were we were able to to sort of turn it around and we were we weren't uh, our dues weren't very high so the first thing we did was say hey we got to raise the dues and get more money so we can you know work on improvements things that need to be fixed um, a lot of the contractors that we were using to do maintenance they maybe weren't competitively bid so we went and you know got our costs down and and got better uh, service at a lower price and so we were collecting more money and spending less and started to be able to you know, make improvements to our community and then we've since turned it over to a management company so I've you know, sort of been uh, interested in in sort of giving back to the community that I live in by being actively involved on the uh, homeowner association board so I, I did that in my spare time and and um, I like to, to cook I like to learning to play golf getting ready to retire so I'm trying to learn how to do that so it, it's part of learning how to retire so I, I'm learning how to play golf well, we're, re we're building a house right now in the Knoxville area. Well, what, what you really see happening, and you know, we see it in, in the meeting today, is that the, the vehicles are evolving. Okay, more electric vehicles. Um, you know, so you, those vehicles are, are going to be a, a challenge to heat because you don't, you don't have an engine. I mean, the, the traditional system of the past that you took the you know, the, uh, the heat off the engine and you use that to heat the car. So now you're going to see more heat pump systems, okay, in vehicles because, you know, that's sort of the trend for electric vehicles is to use, use heat pumps. So what refrigerant is the best refrigerant to use for a heat pump? So the refrigerants are changing, uh, the vehicles are changing, the systems are going to change, there's uh, more thermal management. So you see these secondary loop systems. Uh, you know, there's the, the drive towards more environmentally friendly refrigerants. So that's going to change the, the types of, of components and, and or how robust those components need to be. If it's a carbon dioxide system, you're talking about very high pressures. So those are going to be different requirements than the traditional, say, 134A systems. Um, there's a drive towards using thermoplastic lines versus metal lines. Okay, so there's changes in refrigerants and vehicles and, and thermal management, these secondary loops. Uh, you know, the, you see the environmentally friendly refrigerants are, are either flammable or they're hydrocarbon refrigerants. So there, there's a, a lot of factors that are, that are out there in terms of an you know, protecting the environment, uh, the evolving vehicle, which is going to create new challenges to heat and cool those vehicles, which is, are going to change the, the components and the designs of those systems. So there, there's a lot of change on the horizon in uh, refrigerants and components and even the materials that are, are used in those systems more electrically driven compressors versus belt driven electronic expansion valve yeah. yeah they've been they've been around for a long time when when i was at the the singer company we we made the valve called the 625 it had a elect, it had a bimetal in it and it had uh, two terminals on the top so it had a a, a heated bimetal and as you um, increase the, the voltage to the to the bimetal it would cause the the valve to open and close instead of using a, a refrigerant charged element it used a, a bimetal a heater bimetal to open and close the valve so that was an electric expansion valve not, not necessarily an electronic expansion valve but so I mean electric or electronic expansion valves have been around for a long time they they can be yeah they they a lot of them the the early ones were pulse width width modulated they could be you know that or or say uh, linear actuated a, re, a lot of different ways to do that well you're going to see I, I really think you're going to see more um, secondary loop systems because of the of the the way we're headed with refrigerants yeah. 
Uh, it, it, it looks very promising. It really does, yeah. So yeah, it so, sort of solves the problem with the, with the refrigerant being flammable or certainly can open up the, you know, the, the ball game for even uh, like a propane. So how do you heat these vehicles? Again, I mean, the drive towards heat pump. It, everything's becoming more and more electric. But no, I mean, it's certainly going to create a tremendous uh, engineering challenge and then that cascades down to the to the service and the technician level, we've got to, you know, be able to put the, the right practices in place and knowledge to, to be able to properly diagnose and service those systems, do it uh, correctly and, and safely. It's been an evolution for me to sort of go from scouting to, hey, what's this air conditioning business all about? And so it really sort of set me in, in the a good direction and I, I'll tell you I, I wouldn't if I had to do it all over again I wouldn't have changed a thing. There's things that I've done along the way that I, yeah I wish I would have maybe handled this a little differently or or maybe done that a little better but to say that I'm gonna was gonna do something totally different than how it ended up for me no way it's it's been it's been an awesome been an awesome career working in this industry it really has.